Let's configure an iOS build. I have an app here called Flappy Bird. It's a Swift version. And I have this in a GitHub repository of my own, which here, here I'm going to click on the GitHub repository. So I forked this from an open source project called Flappy Swift. And uh, here we have, you know, Flappy Bird and all of my projects and files. And what I want to do is click on the master branch and configure this build. And here it pulls the project uh, from the workspace, flappybird.xcodeproj. And then there's a shared scheme. Now, this isn't always straightforward. Uh, so sometimes you're going to get a little red error message here that says scheme missing. And so what you'll need to do is go back into your Xcode project, manage your scheme, uh, in your tools and then share that scheme and then what that'll do is create a scheme in your project rather than in your local user folder and then it'll show up here so if you see that message that's what you need to do uh, share your scheme so here you also have your Xcode version uh, and you can pick which Xcode version you'd like to run it against um, build scripts uh, there are three different places where you can run build scripts within App Center Build. And I'll go ahead and drill down into the documentation so that you can see where those are. Um, they are post clone, right after App Center Build uh, clones the repository and before it builds it, pre build, right before it builds it, and then post build, uh, which is a great place to put calls out to test scripts, for, in for instance, App Center Test. So those are the three places in which you can put custom scripts. Uh, build frequency. Right now there are two basic build frequency options. The first one is to build this branch on every push. That means every time a developer does a push to your repo, it will do a build. Um, the other one is manually choose when to run builds. So when you only want to run a build, when you go into App Center build and say run a build, this is the one that you want to, you want to check. Uh, something that's very useful, we often use, uh, automatically increment build number. Uh, this is just a way to keep track of your builds and, and automatically keep track of your builds, either by incrementing a, an ID or by having giving it a timestamp. Uh, the other one is uh, if you have any XTC tests uh, on your projects, this is a way for you to run them automatically. Of course, if they fail, the build will also fail. Environment variables is a way to uh, ascribe name value pairs to your build so that you could use those uh, name value pairs within your build process, particularly within your scripts. Uh, that is the ones that you put in over here under build scripts. Uh, sign your builds. Uh, you have to sign your builds if you want them to run on devices. And so we're not going to do this now. I'll do it in a later module, but you, you'll need to set up your provisioning profile and your certificate and upload those here in order to sign your build. Uh, test on a real device. Uh, if you sign your build, you'll then be able to test on a real device. And what this does is utilize a, a sort of a basic uh, implementation of App Center test in order to just run, when you get a successful build, to just run it far enough to see that it runs. And then it'll give you screenshots of the main page, and then that's it. That's all it does. But basically, it's a smoke test to let you know that not only did your build succeed, but your build actually ran on a, on a real device up in Test Cloud. That's what run on a real device does. Uh, distribute uh, is how you get your builds out to your testers, and we'll go into that in a later module. Uh, advanced is a handy little uh, item that some of you are familiar with. With GitHub, uh, essentially, it just gives you a... Uh, succeeded or failed uh, or status uh, up in uh, an HTTP uh, callout so that you can put that on a page of your own. And that is how we configure a build and then you can save and build or you can save and I'm going to go ahead and save and build. And that's going to queue up our build in the build queue which is, of course, running a Mac OS server uh, that it spun up for you. And this will take a couple of minutes. And there, the build is complete. And that is how we configure your native iOS build.